All right, everybody, so I am standing on a T3 20 by 100. What I'm gonna do, this is a greenhouse right now with roll-up sides, hand cranks. I am gonna retrofit it to become a blackout system. And what I'm gonna do is take channel, and I'm gonna run channel all the way down the center, tech screwing it to every hoop. And when I go to connect these pieces of channel, what I'm gonna do Take a 12 inch piece of channel that I have pre-cut. I have them in my pocket. I slide them underneath and I'll get back and show you how to do this, but I call them hot wheels. Cut up an extra piece of channel, use it as a, uh, as a connection point underneath and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna slide that back in my pocket. Now I'm gonna start tech screwing this channel four inches from my center purlin all the way down to the other end, connecting each piece with a, uh, a hot wheel. I like to use this better than wood because wood rots. And uh, you can make blackout systems other ways, but people who have greenhouses already and they're like, hey, I just want an automated system, this is the way to go. Um, I like to put the channel this way on all of my depths, each to their own. There's a couple different ways to do it, but uh, I find this is the best method for me and and uh, I, I really like it and I have it on my own greenhouse at home. so. Why not do it on yours? But um, again, I'm gonna start tech screwing this and then I'll get back to it and show you guys how we do it. Sitting on my knees on the center purlin bar and I wanna pull back and show you guys. Each hoop gets a tech screw. Each hoop gets a tech screw. As, as I go, I tech screw in my end hoop. I tech screw this hoop through the clear plastic. And yes, this is an inflation blower. Two clear plastics, went through both of them into the hoop. Went through both of them into the hoop. I do this all the way down. People um, are gonna ask, hey, doesn't air escape right there? Or, you know, on every hole? And my answer to that is, in small ways, yes it does, but I, um, I've never seen an inflation blower not blow, and I've been doing it like this for about a year now. And uh, I really like this method, and this is how I retrofit existing greenhouses. Say that this is just a greenhouse frame. Yes, you can put panel like this before you put your plastic. I wanted to do it this way, two reasons. One, I like it like this because now when they only need one inflation blower for this whole entire greenhouse because the air can pass through right here. Versus if this channel was underneath on the frame and I pulled all this plastic, I would have to buy two inflation blowers for this. And people say, oh, is it gonna leak? No, it's not because a big black roll of plastic gets pulled over this and wiggle wired over this section and it sits about 12 inches on both sides. So different ways to do it this way. You can choose to put channel on your frame in the center about two inches off your purlin, and you do that so that you can actually sit your knees on something while doing channel. Without doing it this way, you find yourself stepping five foot spaces all the way down, and it becomes a real big hassle. So put the channel on before the plastic or after the plastic. All right, so I've installed one 12 foot section of um, channel, and what I've done with that Hot Wheel that I showed you, small little piece, I've displaced it halfway underneath this channel, put two tech screws that were just a tiny bit longer than this. So I took really heavy duty Gorilla Tape and I fastened it around the two tips of the screw so it won't protrude anything. I'm squeezing that as hard as I can. It's not going through there. So now what I'll do is I'll set my next channel up, put it on the Hot Wheel, and then I will tech screw, two more tech screws right there and do the duct tape underneath. Make sure to get heavy duty duct tape. This, this is just me doing this. I've been doing it for a long time. I enjoy what I do. Um, I'm gonna get some guys that are gonna say, hey, that's not the right way or there's a different way. That's awesome. I know of three different ways to do this. Channel underneath the plastic, channel on top of the plastic, and then you can make a ridge beam down on the ground Basically, running a pipe on the ground, running channel all on that pipe, pulling your plastic all out, wiggle wiring it to that pipe, pulling the plastic up, which then you bolt the pipe down in different spots from inside, and it's just a hassle. And it doesn't add any structural integrity, it's not 
any better or any worse in my opinion um it's just a harder method and a, and a way more materials so uh follow my way if you like it if not no worries uh, i just want to spread you know help and knowledge and show you guys how to retrofit a greenhouse also this method will work on any greenhouse so if you uh if you have a straight wall if you have a gothic if you have a hoop you can still put channel on the top of every greenhouse this system will roll on a carport it'll roll on pvc hoops so get at your boy the greenhouse guru and i'll uh, get you guys dialed in whatever you want cheers all right so we're about halfway done with uh running channel have the other half to go hot wheeling them together like i said and tech screwing into every hoop once we get this done we will uh throw ropes pull the blackout plastic over get it where we like it i'll show you how to tack it and uh then we will get on top and wiggle wire the whole thing and do the roll-ups all right cheers guys almost done nice and straight getting her done the legs are gonna hurt after this guys got the blackout plastic laid out they're cleaning up and throwing ropes over the spots I've already done channel so that they can be ready to tie and we can pull over. All right guys, so we're all done, straight down. Everything's taped off, even the little tiny you know, edges that could catch a tarp. Throw the stuck tape down here. And uh, now we're going to throw our ropes all the way up and over. How to retrofit any greenhouse, guys. This is really simple. Run wire track on top. Connect it with Hot Wheels. Tech screw into every hoop. Pull black plastic over. Wiggle wire black plastic onto structure from above. After that, hook up roll bars. Set up telescoping arm kit, which I'm gonna go back and show you guys how to do that right now because the boys are setting it up. I wanna show you the dimensions that I like to use and uh, the material. All right, everybody, that is what a complete um, pivot point or um, I like to call them telescoping arms. So find the center of your greenhouse, measure 16 to 18 inches out, find the center 16, 18 inches out, measure two feet one way, two feet the other. So four foot distance, cut your tops off. I haven't cut this side yet. So you can see this side cut. I put a, a bolt through to pivot. This is a 1.3 inch diameter steel, and this is a one inch piece of EMT. Uh, for smaller greenhouses, I like to use the EMT. For bigger greenhouses, I use the inch and five eighths with the one three is the smaller piece. As you can see, the couplings that come with the, uh, let me back this out. This is just a coupling. This piece right here comes with a 12 inch section. Slide this into your roll bar. Two tech screws right here. And slap those bad boys in there nice and tight so they pinch the uh, EMT. And that is your roll bar. A really big thing to measure this pipe right here, your first one, pivot point it, and then run it up. Make sure it doesn't protrude higher than any of the hoop. It needs to stay on the inside diameter of this hoop the whole time. Why? If it comes right here and then lifts up right there, it's gonna lift your motor up because this can only slide so far in there. So if this lifts above this outer perimeter, your motor's not gonna, your motor's gonna lift up and it's gonna protrude and look nasty. So make sure that that one is cut to fit smaller and then obviously cut this pipe smaller than whatever length this one is about a foot and you will be good cheers guys i'll show you how it works when it's all set up and put together retrofitting a 20 by 100 greenhouse that we just built i'm saying retrofitting because this is the title of the name of the video uh, posting because everyone's asking hey how do you put a blackout system on how do you retrofit a greenhouse same concept for every different style whether it's a straight wall gothic or a straight hoop so uh follow hit the like button subscribe leave a comment thank you guys so much i really appreciate it let me know what you think about the videos and if there's room for improvement always i love constructive criticism cheers all right i want to show you guys a little trick um trying to get this into my channel but they're not lining up and i can't turn my channel 
If you ever need to move your blackout up or down, these wires right here are 12, 24 volts. And uh, if you touch them to a battery terminal, it's going to run one way. If you switch from neutral to positive, it's going to run the other way. DeWalt battery. Positive, negative. Says it right there, B plus, B negative. Stick one end in one end. One in the other. As you can see in the video, my motor is turning. I'm going to stop it. About there. And now I can slide my pipe in. I can tech screw it. So, definitely a good little tip. You can use DeWalt, Ryobi, Milwaukee, any kind of De any kind of power tool, and uh, it'll run these individually or a car battery. <laughs> So, up top, you want this seam to run parallel to your channel. It doesn't matter where this seam is, you just use it as a reference guide next to your channel. This one, hand width. So when I'm up top here, wiggle wiring, I have a tack here right now and I'll explain that in a second, but when I'm up top here wiggle wiring this final, I'll use that as a reference guide with my hand. Same movement every time. Same space. So as I wiggle wire, I'll do that. If it gets closer, I'll ask a guy down here to tug to the left, tug to the right. Always keeping tension on each side with the tack. So I tack this side, I'm gonna go to that side, make sure same space, and then I'm gonna pull tight and tack. And then uh, from there, I'll get up here, I'll actually have Ian hop up here, and Ian's gonna wiggle wire this track all the way down while I sit on the side of this with my scissors and I'm gonna trim off the excess on both sides and the excess on each side, and I will uh, make a video of Ian up here and a video of how to connect your roll bars. All right, so just like the other side where Ian is right now, I was standing, my hand was a spacer, correct? So, now I'm on this side, hand same space. Have a clip here to pull the tension, have a clip there to pull the tension. Ian's about to hop up there and uh, wiggle wire this track 100%. Very exciting stuff. Be very careful when doing this. So your purlin bar, Ian, is right here, next to it. Yeah, you're just gonna have to step on each hoop. All right, good job. <laughs> Young buck up here. Oh, man. Getting her blacked out, man. These guys crushed it. All right, after Ian was done <clears throat> wiggle wiring the top, I had gone ahead and sat this aluminum roll bar. Sometimes in certain situations, it's just a 1.3 inch diameter pipe. It's just like that with swages and some channel. But this one has the channel built inside of it. So what I did, I set it on the bar, I set the bar on the plastic, and then I, I literally did this all by myself. Cradled it, lifted it up, to where it matched the bottom of my baseboard and every three hoops I connected it to get it level 100% with the baseboard because if my baseboard is true and level this will roll true and level so once I know that it rolls good I will tack more spots in between and then I will roll it up and I will get to that on how these dials work here in the next video give me some dials on the back of your motor all right, so the dials on your motor have little turn tabs. You can turn them to zero and zero. That's how they come. When you want to go up five rolls, you turn it to five. That means this thing's going to turn five times this way. The one facing down is the, the dial that controls the down stop position. So if you have it going down and you want it to stop, roll it back to zero and then click and then 
just roll it to one roll at a time to get it to sit exactly where you want it to be facing down and the same with up so when I start this I will show you how in a video on how I walk this up piece by piece all the way to the top to get my center mark and then walk it back down to get my bottom mark but when you do run it up it will save how many rotations so you know how many rotations you're going to go down and then you just uh, go down and then you turn it to zero whenever you want it to stop and I'll explain further in the video. So I just hooked this battery up to the motor rolling up green light indicates that there's power being sent to the motor and it is going to roll five rotations because I have the dometer set to five. I'm gonna get another ladder, set it right here, run this five rotations till it gets closer. As it gets closer, I will just run it one rotation at a time so that it gets closer and closer and I can watch it and make sure that it's getting up here evenly, spaced to this, because you can see how perfect we got that tarp. I mean, there isn't a, it's straight in between both spots. So you wanna get your roll bar up don't get it super close to this. If you do, good luck, man, because once it touches this, it rips the whole tarp, ruins everything. So keep your roll bar, you know, like that one over there. What I mean by walking up is as it gets closer to this, I just turned it to zero, and it's gonna stop here in just a second. Boom, stopped because I pressed it to zero. Bear with me, this is very hard recording because we are extremely high. So if you want to make it roll one more time, press this button in once. Boom, one rotation. I hope I got that on the video, but um, that's how you get one rotation. Very scary. I'm gonna roll it back down because I don't like how close it got to the uh, center. And I'm also gonna roll it down because as you can see at the very end, it still is lagging. And uh, I'm just gonna turn this off.